Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Rockefeller, and I've been a member of this UU Fellowship since 1999, the last century. And other than reading someone else's sermon when we were in a pinch, this is my first sermon of my own in these many years. We have many talented and learned members who have given personal and moving sermons, and I've never felt I was up to the task until now, or at least I hope I am. The state of our country and society at this time is more divided than at any time I can remember in my 62 years. It may have been worse in the 1960s, but I was too young to have any understanding of the complexities of that time. The political divides have affected many families, including mine and my spouse. We call it crossing the cultural divide when we spend time with people who have the title of family, but who feel almost like alien beings to us because of their worldview. For many of us suffering from this type of despair over the state of our politics, race relations, families, climate change, and aging within our current realm, how do we carry on to lead a happy life? Or maybe not even happy, but at least worthwhile and satisfying. For those of us with any years under our belt, life is challenging. And with the good times, there definitely come some rough times, as COVID-19 has demonstrated. In my family, if anyone said, she's having a hard time, that was a vast understatement of emotional distress. I have two cousins who have committed suicide, one who attempted suicide multiple times, and friends who have succumbed to the despair to commit the ultimate act of violence against themselves. I personally do not own a gun because I'm afraid that in a time of despair, I could be tempted to commit suicide, or as my Archie Bunker-like father would, like to, would say, look to a permanent solution to a temporary problem. That leads me to thinking how very grateful I am for my Unitarian Universalist faith. As a non-Christian in a predominantly Christian country, I have never really understood faith. As a nurse and the family member of a person with a chronic health condition, I am proud and honored to walk with people on their path during difficult life challenges. From my limited perspective, doctors come in on their white horse, and what's the symbolism of the color of even the horse in today's society? But I digress, and that's another subject. Doctors set the bone or repair the joint and are on their way as the hero, while nurses, predominantly women, are present when people are born, when they die, and for all the, excuse me, SH, you know the rest, both literally and figuratively, in between. I've come to realize that the greatest gift any of us ever really has is the gift of our time and our presence. That leads me to my faith and how it continues to help me on this life journey. I was first introduced to one of my favorite readings from our hymnal by the beloved UU minister, Lois Van Leer. It is by Wayne B. Arneson, UU reading number 698. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard, and the path is never clear, and the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. For me, when I feel despair, it is when I feel all alone. Loneliness is epidemic in our materialistic society at a time when most of us have our physical comforts met more than ever before, yet lack the spiritual ease of enjoying this journey of life. When I can meditate, canoe, or bicycle in nature, I am more able to connect to that overarching positive energy, field of life, and love 
than in the dark of night. I have to regularly remind myself to do the maintenance work of caring not only for my aging body, but for my soul. That UU reading helps me with that. Also, Judy Fiel's song, If There Is a God, which you will hear hopefully later in this service, plays into my faith journey as a Unitarian Universalist. I cannot see a God in this world, that universally positive energy field from my predominantly female viewpoint comes when what we need comes to us from a direction we never could imagine. I wrote this sermon while helping a beloved cousin in Alaska through a dark time. And as I write this, I don't know the ending. Stan Cummings, UU acquaintance from Port Townsend, Washington, was writing a sermon entitled, The Future, It's Not What You Think. The Monday before Stan was to give that sermon, he was struck by a tool hanging off the side of a mower that was being towed on a trailer while he was riding his bicycle to town and received a severe head injury that led to his death two days after he would have otherwise presented his service that I never got to hear. I find the title of his sermon both ironic and oh so very true. For many of us, our mental health is tied up in what we think the future will be. Aging for me means planting my own carrots or finding things to look forward to. Despair comes when we are afraid of our imagined future without things to look forward to. That leads to me, me to my faith and my de definition of believing things will work out okay. To have faith that what I need will come to me when I need it from some source I never could have imagined. There it is again, the future. It's not what you think. But having faith and hope is something people don't really understand until they really need to. And that's where grace comes in. People, community, both UU and secular, come in and provide the help we need. Having that faith is a great source of strength to me. Another UU reading that guides me and helps me in tough times is We Need One Another, number 468, by George E. O'Dell. We need one another when we mourn and would be comforted. We need one another when we are in trouble and afraid. We need one another when we are in despair, in temptation, and need to be recalled to our best selves again. We need one another when we would accomplish some great purpose and cannot do it alone. We need one another in the hour of success when we look for someone to share our triumphs. We need one another in the hour of defeat when with encouragement we might endure and stand again. We need one another when we come to die and would have gentle hands prepare us for the journey. All our lives we are in need and others are in need of us. We don't know who or where the help we need will come, but with faith, it will come. Many Americans are afraid of death, yet no one ever fails death. We all get to do it sometime, so we can relax and know that whenever that time comes, whether it comes expected by either old age or some unforeseen unfortunate event like Stan's, all stories come to an end, and ours will too. Whether our life journey or our life story is okay with us depends on our faith, however we define it. Resilience is our ability to adapt to whatever events happen in our lives and how we cope. Do we use harmful coping techniques of alcohol, drugs, violence towards ourselves or others? 
Or do we take those events and redefine the story that lets us live our lives with grace, love, and kindness? That is up to us to determine. And with the help of grace, I see around me, here in my Unitarian Universalist community, both here in Bozeman and Port Townsend, Washington, I have my Unitarian Universalist faith to help me through the rough patches. With this written at 4 a.m. local Alaska time, 6 a.m. Montana time, with tears running from my eyes as I see whether I find grace today for my cousin's rough situation, I will travel this journey holding on very tightly to my UU faith to guide me to be a bit of grace in his life. Perhaps grace will find me when I need it too, and may that faith be so for all of us on our journey of life. Thank you for listening to me. I hope it makes sense and maybe even be a little bit helpful in your journey of Unitarian Universalism, your faith as you define it, and your ability to have resilience in time of changes and challenges. As a post note, I stayed 10 days in Fairbanks last August with my cousin Steve, who lives 14 miles outside of Fairbanks in a dry cabin. That means no running water or indoor plumbing, and that is home for Steve. He's recovered from his knee replacement at age 78, almost 79, and is continuing to live on his own in that cabin where I wrote this sermon, and grace came through for him. Blessed be.